Hey friends, if you have been curious about the brand new All About Math release and you wanna know more about this program, well, today's video is for you. I have compiled a bunch of questions from you guys here on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and I'm gonna share the answers to the most frequently asked questions that are gonna help you get a better peek inside this curriculum and what you can expect. So let's get started. Question number one, how many levels of All About Math are available and are going to be available? So eventually All About Math will be levels one through five. You can get one starting today. I'll leave a link down in my description to where you guys can check it out. It is available to order starting today. And then level two is hopefully going to be out by the end of the summer. Levels three, four, and five plan to be out within the next year. They don't have exact dates due to production variabilities there, but it should be coming out very, very soon. So I'm really excited to see them coming out with these and coming out with them so quickly. The second most commonly asked question is which levels are for which grade and where do I start? Well, these are designed to cover all of the skills that your child will need, learning skills that are typically taught from kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade. However, just like with all about reading and all about spelling, it is less about the grade level and more about mastering the specific skills that your child needs to learn. That means that level one is gonna cover all of kindergarten and some of first grade. Level two is gonna cover the rest of first grade and second grade, and then level three will be third, level four will be fourth grade, and level five will be fifth grade. Now with any math, you're going to see discrepancies and differences when it comes to their scope and sequence, because everyone has a different way of approaching and learning math. Because this is mastery concept, there are a few concepts in the level one that you might expect to see in there, things like time or money that aren't introduced to level two, but when you start at the beginning, you get a nice cohesive experience. If you're not sure where to start with your child, you can take the placement test that they have on their website. Again, I link those down below for you. They have placement tests for level one and level two. And as they come out with new levels, they will continue to put out more placement tests to help you find the right fit for your family. If you have a first grader, for instance, and you're unsure where to start because there is first grade concepts covered in both level one and in level two, that's where that placement test is going to come in handy. My personal thought process and what I've always said with all about reading and all about spelling is you are better off to start a little bit earlier and to take those lessons a lot faster. So to start in level one, to maybe go really quickly through the beginning part of level one and use it as a good time of review and help solidify those concepts and then move in and slow down a little bit as you get to new concepts towards the end of the book. This helps to ensure there are no gaps and they have a clear understanding of all the concepts taught. Question number three is, can my child do this independently or is it going to require teaching from me? This is definitely a parent-led program, especially in level one. I cannot speak to the later levels since they are not out yet, but my guess, knowing the All About Learning programs that I have used previously, is that they will be predominantly teacher taught. Now, the extra information for that is that it is designed to be done in 15 to 20 minutes a day. So you set a timer, you go through the lesson, it is fully scripted, open and go, easy for you to be able to teach your child. So yes, you're teaching them, but it doesn't take a lot of extra prep or a lot of extra knowledge. You'll be able to confidently teach this even if math is not your strong suit. And while the lessons are designed to be predominantly done with a parent or a teacher, you do have a lot of components to this that are meant to be used for review. So for instance, they have several cardstock games and activities, as well as ones in the activity book that are designed to be played over and over again for extra review. I personally would plan to teach the concept to my child, play it once or twice with them, and then have a math basket of these different games and activities for concepts they've already learned that they can go to and play independently or with a sibling or maybe with you know dad when he comes home or whatever it might be. This is an opportunity for them to be able to have that extra view without needing you. So just because it's parent led doesn't mean that there is no independent aspect to it. It is just gonna be more hands-on because you're talking about the younger, more pivotal early ages. Question number four, do I need a lot of prep and setup? No, you do not need a lot of preparation involved. Everything is open and go. That means that you can pull out the activity book and the teacher book. You can open it up, read the lessons. It's gonna tell you exactly what materials that already came in the box that you're going to need. And then you can take the activity pages for that day and you can just pull them out, cut out the pieces as you go, and you're good to go. 
That being said, I will probably set mine up the same way that I have set up my all about spelling and all about reading curriculums where I prep the entire year in advance. I put it in sleeve protector so that I can use it again. And I like to be able to do this so that it's even more open and go when it comes to the school year. I'll be sharing a video more about how I organize that later this summer. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Question number five is how long does a level typically take to complete? Well, this is a little complicated because there are 60 lessons, at least in this level one, and I believe it'll be about the same for the other levels. And while some people might look at that and say, that's only 60 days worth of lessons, that's not actually how the All About Learning material works. Because it is mastery based, your child is designed to work on the program for 15 to 20 minutes a day. Sometimes, especially if it's more review for your child, you might be able to complete one lesson a day, but most of the time, it's actually gonna take your child a couple of days to complete the lessons. And I've even had in All About Reading, it take a week or more to complete a lesson, depending on how your child is doing with concept. I love the fact that they incorporate so many review games and activities, so that if your child is struggling with it, you can sit in that lesson for as long as you need, but also if your child is moving quickly, you're able to get them through the material they need to know at a rapid pace. This means one level could last you an entire year. Other times it could last a semester or more. The goal isn't to rush, it's to keep consistency because having those short consistent lessons every day is how your child will learn best. Question number six is, does it include writing numbers and handwriting practice sheets? Yes, it does you'll see that they do work on beginning writing numbers. So here you're supposed to write the number one three times, number two, three times, so on and so forth. Here you're supposed to circle which group of socks has more and then write how many more it has. So there definitely are writing elements within the program. I will say though that this program is lighter on the writing, which makes it perfect developmentally for a lot of kids who are in those early ages. I see a lot of math programs out there that are really phenomenally done, but have so much much handwriting that it really can bog a child down because their mind is able to handle the math concepts much quicker before their actual fine motor skills are able to keep up with that. So there is writing practice in here, but it is light and it is very, very adaptable if you need, if you have a child who is struggling with writing, or if you want more writing practice, you could always incorporate that on your own. So of course, the second we start talking about writing in the book, the question comes up, is this reusable? Can you use this for multiple kids or do you have to have an activity book for each and every one of your kids? Well, the answer is simple. Just like All About Reading and All About Spelling, All About Math was designed with the idea that every child would have their own activity book. However, many parents like myself actually reuse the material over and over again to give us the best bang for a buck. Now, if you only have one child, obviously you just need one book. And if you maybe even I've considered with having only two two little ones now with my older kids all being older, maybe going ahead and doing it and not saving it. But I will tell you, I'm using the all about reading with my kids that I was using with their brother who is almost 16. So it definitely works great to, to prep it, preserve it and pass it down to your kids if that's something you wanna put the time and effort and energy to. Otherwise you can buy individual activity books for your children. With the writing sheets though, how does that work when it comes to having that be reusable? Within the math manipulatives kit is actually a reusable pouch that you can tear out those pages and slide them in or you could use a sleeve protector and that way you can use like a dry erase marker and be able to reuse those pages over and over again but still get in that practice writing. Speaking of the math manipulatives, everybody's asking, do I really need to purchase these? Do I need to get this kit? The answer, depends. Yes, you will absolutely 100% need these materials in order to teach these lessons effectively. Almost every lesson is designed to utilize at least one, if not more of these manipulatives. And this manipulatives box will actually last you for all about math one through five. So it's a one-time purchase. You don't have to purchase again. Now, why should you possibly not purchase it? Well, the reason is simple. If you already have all of these math manipulatives or the majority of the math manipulatives, you might be better off just picking and choosing the ones that you're missing instead of buying the entire kit. What all is included in that? Well, we've got our base 10 blocks. So this is our block of 1000. 
our blocks of 100, our blocks of 10, and our blocks of one. We also have the snap cubes. I've had a couple of these sets over the years, but I'm glad to get a new one because I am out. These all snap together and make it really easy for your child to learn, especially a lot of those beginning addition and subtraction skills. It comes with two packs of counting bears, so 40 in all. It comes with a ruler. It comes with a protractor, fraction tiles, which I absolutely love these. These help you to see parts of a hole very easily. And you have your counters. Now, again, not all of these will be utilized in that first level. Some of them will be used in levels three, four, five, but this is something to keep in mind. If you don't already have these things, grabbing that set, getting the nice container that it all comes in to store it might be the best bet for you. Question number nine is, does this math include mental math? And the answer is, Yes, mental math is that ability to be able to see a problem and to be able to answer it in your head and not require paper for it. It involves that deductive reasoning of being able to use your visual perceptions and logic to be able to understand what is coming next and looking for those natural patterns. It's also usually involves some supatizing, which is that idea of being able to see five pennies on the table and know immediately it's five without having to physically count them. And yes, those skills are built within this program. Yes, you are going to have times where your child is going to write down the problem. It's not exclusively mental math, but there are elements where they're asking relationship building questions, where they are asking how many more do you need to get to 10? It includes five frames and 10 frames that your child will utilize. You'll have counters on here and say, all right, how many do you have left? And they can easily see there's three spaces left that they have or whatever it might be. So there are a lot of these different types of mental math exercises that are included. Question number 10 was probably the most asked question. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure I can fully answer this all the way, but a lot of people wanted to know how does this math compare with math with confidence? This is a question I get all the time. And the truth is I don't feel fully confident in answering this question because while we did use math with confidence for a short period of time, we ended up transitioning out of it because my younger two girls ended up having math being taught by my friend Wendy over at Plan Prep Pray for a season. And so because of that, I don't feel like I can speak for all of the math with confidence uh, community there. Or again, I have not gotten the opportunity to actually get to utilize this all about math, even though I have poured hours over this curriculum and learning more about it. But let me tell you a few things I have observed and maybe would be helpful to you. Both of these are gentle approaches to math. Both use a very logical sense of when and how to introduce math, different math concepts to your kids. Although both do have very different scopes and sequences. So if you're considering one or the other, you may want to check out their scopes and sequences to see which might be the best fit for you. I have heard it said, and I have personally experienced that the Math with Confidence teachers books have a lot of moving pieces and sometimes there can lack some clarity on how to utilize those moving pieces. Now, many people have just gotten used to it and they love it and they go with the flow and that's great. I think one of the things that All About Math has going for it is the fact that so many people are used to utilizing their teacher's manuals for All About Reading and All About Spelling that it's just kind of natural. It just sort of fits and makes sense because I'm already used to utilizing their other teacher books so I know exactly how it's laid out and they really follow that same pattern as much as possible possible when it comes to this curriculum. So I think in general, you're going to find that all about math is a little bit more open and go, especially because they have that math manipulative kit with everything already included. Whereas with math with confidence, they use more found items, which is great, but you do have to go and find those items. So neither good or bad, just something to keep in mind. Another thing that I find difference wise is that with all about math, the teacher's book is full color, has a lot of additional helps for you. So they're like, Hey, if your child, is really struggling in this concept. Here's something you could do to make it a little bit easier. Hey, if your child has like flown through this concept, you actually could take it up a notch and make it a little bit harder to help them understand more. So there's more teacher helps as far as that goes and just more information for the teacher. Whereas the math with confidence is black and white and is, um, has less of those extra additional helps. Again, both are great programs, not here to convince you one way or the other. And again, I don't feel fully confident in sharing a full comparison. I can maybe do that after utilizing both of them a little bit more, but I wanted to give you my first initial thoughts. If you want to learn more about the All About Math program and see inside, be sure to check out this video here.